right, man, let's talk about uh, Terrence Crawford and Israel Matamov prediction. If you're on the Patreon, you will see this first. Appreciate everybody for supporting the channel. Hit the link tree, find me on X, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash, App, Venmo, PayPal. So um, let's line it up, right? So apparently uh, Terrence Crawford is taking on Israel Madrimov. Uh, if you've seen it, uh, I meant to put it up earlier uh, Saturday. Uh, I wasn't meant to put up Saturday. Israel uh, Madrid off uh, film breakdown. Y'all got it Sunday. That was a mistake. Man, I was just moving and and, and, and moving, whatever. So Crawford is taking on Israel Madrimov, who is the champion, 154 pounds. If you've seen, we did a film breakdown on the Patreon, on the Goodfella TV side of things. It is still up. Um, and um, just some things about Madrid Uzbekistan. Uh, five, eight and a half, 68 and a half inch arms. Um, we broke down his last fight with Karbanov. Uh, Karbanov was mass slow. We broke down the Michael Sore fight. I also seen, it was another fight that he had. Oh, versus this Ibuki, Ibuki guy in San Antonio. I seen, that's the first fight I seen, but I didn't break that fight down. Shout out to the brother Trick Nosey for sending it to me. Um, I think it's a real fight. Um, I've been criticized for saying that, that Crawford just won't win the easy fight. I think it's an actual real fight. One of the reasons I say it's a real fight is because anytime you move him from 47 to 54, that's a huge jump in weight. That's a huge jump in weight. Let me tell you that again. That's a huge jump in weight. So the glove sizes go up by, by two ounces. The guys may not be as skilled as some of the welterweights, but what I will say is, what I will say is, they they rugged, and with Charlo Wayne Supreme over that division, he had a lot of questionable. Uh, he had a loss there, and he had some other fights that easily could have been a loss. John Jackson, um, the first Brian Castano's fight. He had a fight with Rosado that could have been uh, considered a, a, you know, could have went the other way too. Or Vines Monterosian, excuse me. Um, I think he had a fight with Gabriel Rosado too. That was pretty close. Some people thought. Um, I could be wrong, but maybe that was his brother. Maybe I'm tripping. But nonetheless, it's it's a tough division. You know, usually some of those guys got a hold. Charlo, complete fighter, but he just didn't like pressure. You know, you have a guy like uh, Rosario. Um, he just didn't have a chin. Guy like J Rock. He just didn't have a lot of power. You know what I'm saying? So it was always some holes. Um, it was always some holes in the game. You know what I'm saying? It was always some holes in uh, in their games at that division, man. And um, it's a tough division. Matt Madrimov, um, want to know a little bit about him. Um, I seen him lead off with a lot of overhand looping shots and he loved the lead uppercut. He loved uh, uppercut in general. He switches. And I just seen him do it off the jab. So, I mean, he's a very versatile fighter, in my humble opinion. Terrence Crawford, what more need to be said? Two division undisputed champion, um, three division lineal champion, lightweight, junior welterweight, welterweight, uh, undisputed at junior welterweight, welterweight, 77.5% um, knockout ratio. 5'8", 74 and a half inch arm. So he almost got what a five and a half inch uh, reach advantage. Been out the ring for over a year, so that's that's not you know ideal uh, for what you want as a fighter. Um, uh, he fought Karbanov last mar this March, so he's been in the ring in March, and before that he was almost off a year from uh, April to March, almost to uh, to the day, almost to the day if he. Uh, he was off over a year, excuse me, a year and a month. So, he, no, I'm not, no, he was, yeah, a year and a month. So, you know, he fought already once this year, coming back, you know, March 8th, coming back uh, August 3rd. So he got some activity going in his career. Um, he's 29 years old, got the youth, 10 and 0, seven knockouts, zero losses, one draw. Now, um, some of the things he does well uh, in the fight game is that, uh, Lee, you know, his ability, his right hand, his looping shots, his ability to switch. I think an uppercut, one of his favorite shots. Um, he got a really good, um, he has a really good uppercut. He has a, a good jab. 
He got a good right hand. He'll drop the jab to the body and try to come over the top with the right hand. That's a a, a classic, classic, uh, you know, it's a classic move. Mayweather did a lot of it um, along with other fighters. Um, and then, you know, uh, continue, to, continue to move on. He, uh, you know, he also likes to... Uh, you know, pivot out. His footwork is good. He like to pivot, so he gonna use angles and turn. His footwork is solid. Um, some of the weaknesses that I see, I see him get tired in the fight or two. Um, a little tired. Uh, he's slow. Um, but he ain't as slow as Karbanov. Uh, Karbanov was godly slow. Jesus Christ. Um, he ain't as slow as Karbanov. Um, but I just really know the speed. Um, you know. In, I've seen him get tired, maybe because he a little bit more uh, muscular, a muscular set, you know, maybe because he got a little bit more muscle, but you know, for the most part, uh, you know, for the most part, you know, uh, he can get hit every now and again, but he seemed to have a good idea when to switch. So we get two switch hitters in there, no diddy. Um, so it's one thing I do notice from him, but that's really, really the glare weaknesses that I see. Keep his chin tucked, keep his guard high. Uh, so his defense is, is solid as well, too, 70% knockout ratio. Um, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, back to Crawford, we know what he do. Um, you know, speed, you know, going to a new division, we'll see how the first thing we people want to see is how the power translate. How, how, how does he physically look? Is he one step out of his truth? Did he get old? Um, did he get old? They fight in L.A., by the way. Uh, was it the BOA or something like that? Uh, want to see how the speed translate, the power translate, how you wear the weight, uh, how you carry the weight. But you know, those are probably all weaknesses that we we, we or, or things that's in the contrast or in the middle, in the gray area that we want to see. Um, but we know what he do: switch hitter, jab, um, good jab. You know, good left hand. His power punches mostly the right hand. He can knock you out with the left. Good footwork. Um, I mean, he can punch, he can box, he can stick behind the jab, he can move his legs, he can stand and bang, he can tuck his chin to come get you. Um, so, yeah, he does, a, you know, he does a lot of, uh, you know, he does a lot of different things. So, uh, um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So, uh, um yeah, it's gonna be interesting, but you know, nonetheless, uh, you know, just talking about how this fight's pretty much gonna be sized up. Um, um, I think. Hold on, I'm tripping. Here y'all go. I think ultimately, what it's gonna come down to, you know, for Crawford is how he, how he, you know, take the punch. Um. You know, and how does he get respect? One thing about Crawford is he going to throw multiple punches. You know, he going to throw multiple punches. But I think for Madrimov to win this fight, um, you know, uh, I think for Madrimov to win this fight, I think what it's really gonna come down to is, you know, can he can he can he catch Crawford? Can he wear Crawford down? Can he bang the body? Um can he bang the body? Can he catch Crawford one of them overhand looping right shots? And one of the things that Joel Diaz said, he trained Felix Diaz for that fight. He said he only had Felix Diaz for three weeks. You know, and he had to cut from 160 all the way down to 140. And for the most part, you know, um, he said that, uh, you know, he said that, uh, that uh, you know, what I noticed was they did a lot of overhand lefts and rights. They called Crawford with a lot of looping shots up top. Um, I think Madrimo is going to do the same thing. He liked to lead off the of lefts and rights. Um, I think he want to hit Crawford in the body and the arms, try to wear him down. They're going to try to use a jab. 
He's going to try to throw a lot of overhand lefts and rights. He's going to try to catch Crawford with an uppercut. And when you hit Crawford, Crawford like to come get you. You know, he don't care nothing about the game plan. So if he could tag Crawford a couple of times and walk him into an overhand left and right or an uppercut, I think he got the re- recipe to uh, win the fight. But I think he can't forget about his jab. Um, I think he can't forget about his jab. And I think he got to do a combination of using the jab and trying to get the right hand off the jab. I think he got to do a combination of leading off the lefts and rights. But the thing about it is when he lead off of them lefts, lefts and rights, he better hope Crawford don't step in and, and, and counter him and step to him. If he kept if he catch Crawford pulling out with them overhand lefts and rights, he got a good opportunity to, to upset the apple cart. You know what I'm saying? But I think he need a combination of working the jab, working the body, um, you know, leading off of them overhand lefts and right and them uppercuts. But if he, you know, miss with them overhand lefts and rights or, you know, he's his positioning to be in, to be able to defend and come back is always good to defend, excuse me. Um, but if he misses with them overhand lefts or wild uppercut, he probably going to end up getting slept. For Crawford, thing is, uh, fill him out, um, see real how your body feel, you know. But the thing about Crawford, if one punch can't get it done, he's a combination puncher. So, the, the recipe to make up for not having a one punch at 54 if possible, going up two ounces in gloves, whatever, he already throw combination punches. So that make him more of a deadly puncher. His speed is what's going to carry him, his skill level, his length. So using your speed, stand behind your speed, your length, making sure your defense is crispy um, and making sure, you know, you're not looking for one big punch. You're putting punches together, working the body up and down. He gets tired and making sure you keep your chin tucked and your head down, your chin tucked, your hands up. When them overhand lefts and right, but his speed is going to be the key to this fight for Terrence Crawford. Um, speed, 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 combination punching, body work. I mean, just beat him to the punch, being first, you know, and when he throw them wild looping shots, being in position to catch and shoot or punch in between those shots, I think it's the key as simple as that. I like Crawford by decision, um, 116, 111, something like that. Um, Maybe even a little bit wider, but I don't think he stopped Israel Madrim off. I think Madrim he can. Madrim get tired down the stretch, but I'm just going to say Crawford knockout streak in here uh, with a nice, comfortable decision. I think he uh, Madrim off going to land some shots. Would I be surprised if Crawford went down? Nah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I like Madrim off in this fight, man. Um, I mean, excuse me, I like Crawford in this fight. You know, I mean, decision comfortable. I think it'd be a good fight. Um, and I think it'd be enough to give Fondor. Uh, his fans you know, get him interested in the fight. So appreciate the love and support. Let me know what you girls and guys think. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash at Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor. Um, check out the Patreon. Appreciate y'all. Peace.